Having a release that coincides with the arrival of Fallout 4 makes it easy for an RPG to be swept away and forgotten all among the hype, but Thea the Awakening deserves to be remembered. It's a game with a history of resilience, having risen from the ashes of a failed Kickstarter to be completed. The heart of the game is in its depth and the room for creativity this allows. With over 4,400 items, the turn-based combat, expeditions and village management never get stale, and can be approached in a myriad of ways. The rules of roguelike are in play, so the aim is to go further than before. Also, the procedurally generated worlds make every crossing of the hex base grid a new adventure, and a chance to uncover any one of the 200 unique non-linear story events. The world is steeped in Slavic mythology, meaning a lot of the intriguing powers, story and monsters in the game will most likely be new to you. Thea the Awakening is a great RPG with an impressive amount of depth in its gameplay and world. The near colourless world of 12 is better than 6 is marked by the smeared trails of blood you leave. In their starkness, they're unmistakable, always reminding you of your impact, of the life and death you simultaneously bring to the world. But to believe these notions would be an act of reading into things too much. 12 is better than 6 is a game that talks with its guns. An old school top down shooter, it's easy to compare in style to a modern champion of the genre in Hotline Miami. Enemies come at you fast and in numbers, requiring just as quick reflexes, and resulting in swift and satisfying kills. It's advertised as with stealth elements that come in the form of creeping behind walls and sneaking through rooms, but the game is no splinter cell. The pen and paper hand drawn art does well to capture the desert with the blankness of its white, as well as the contrastingly detailed towns with its finely placed ink. The western style and Mexican setting add flavour to the world and its characters, and the use of real world places helps authenticate the story. These additions are nice and serve well as a point of difference. However, 12 is better than 6 is still just what you'd expect of a top down shooter. There's nothing really new. If you're a fan of the genre or anything action heavy, 12 is better than 6 is a solid option worthy of consideration. But if not, there's no real reason to reach for it. As the title suggests, Zero Reflex is a challenging test of your reaction time. So challenging that the developers are actually awarding 10 grand to the first player to legitimately beat the game. Three weeks in and there's yet to be a winner. Put simply, this game is close to impossible to complete. The Eye of Sauron sits at the centre of the game, watching your every move and unleashing a series of projectiles for you to dodge. Movement is restricted to the circumference of the circle around the eye, making it easy for you to get trapped. The levels are colourful and psychedelic, with each taking on a unique theme that also changes the dynamic of the game with new hazards. All up, Zero Reflex is tough, smart and affordable, not to mention there's still 10k to be won. We've wanted to talk about Mini Metro for quite a while. And now the time has finally come with the game's full release. A train management sim, Mini Metro is pretty much a subway map come to life. As the city grows, you need to keep it moving with a smartly designed network, drawing lines you can connect stations and extended routes. Increased number of passengers and ever rising waiting times will keep you constantly adjusting your layout for maximum efficiency. New assets will provide some relief, but eventually your network will fail. It's about how far you can go before it comes crashing down. There's 11 cities that range from London, to Cairo, to Sao Paulo. Each come with their own designs and obstacles. There's also three modes of play. Endless, for anxiety-free sandbox experiences. Extreme, for a bigger challenge. And of course, standard play. As a highly logical game, one of the unexpected joys of Mini Metro is how your strategic compilation of colourful lines becomes a kind of unique piece of art when zoomed out. All up, Mini Metro is a compact and well-designed management title that effortlessly engages you from the first game and for many hours after. Morning. What's up? Not much. 
Whilst digital communication and internet relationships are constantly evolving, they have, from 1998's You've Got Mail to Catfish, been extensively explored in media. However, Sybil manages to add meaningful insight to the online romance discourse as a video game. The aim is kind of to put you in the position of one of the lovers, 19 year old Nina. But when you start the game on her desktop and look through her poetry and photos, you feel more like an intruder snooping through her computer. This is a nod to the autobiographical nature of the story. Developer Nina Freeman shares her story, as well as her voice and photos of herself. So it does feel like you're intruding, but also adds authenticity. The meat of the game is the budding relationship between Nina and Ishii, mostly explored through the game within this game, an MMORPG called Volta Mary. Volta Mary is very much a stripped back game with light combat but no real threat of death. The focus is really on the communication between the two lovers, which is also a sort of comment on how games can exist primarily to keep people connected. As the two continue to chat, their relationship becomes more intimate and sexual, and Nina shares photos of herself. Here the game becomes more, pardon the pun, naked and voyeuristic, and makes this internet love more real, serious and scary. Some reviewers have complained that the game's ending wasn't satisfying. The thing is, Sybil is based on a true story and the truth isn't always satisfying. It's just reality. Be wary that the game only takes two hours to complete, and as you'd expect from a narrative game, there isn't a lot of action. But even if it isn't your kind of game, no one has had the balls or the vision to make it. Not until now. And for that reason, Sybil should at the very least have your respect. And for that reason also, it's our game of the month this November.